and welcome to the Industry Leaders Interview Series. My name is Jana Abramova, and I'm a partner at Preachers and Ventures. It is an early stage fund based in London, investing in Preachers and Founders and their awesome ideas in AI, fintech, and the future of work life spaces. I have a special guest with me here today. His name is Tim Draper. For those of you who don't know Tim, um, he's a founder of Draper Associates and DFJ, Draper Venture Network, and he's an early investor in many unicorns such as Baidu, Hotmail, Tesla, Robinhood, SpaceX, and Coinbase that just IPO'd last week. Huge congrats. Hi, Tim. Very excited to have you here you today. Um, and uh, as a part of the, the series about the industry leaders, I would like to cover today as much as we can everything about the crypto space for our audience. You are the best person to talk about crypto. And then when we think about crypto, we think about Tim Draper. So um, having said that, let's When get you think about crypto, I want you to think about the decentralization of the earth and the... And the um, the borders, uh, the, all these geographic borders falling and collapsing, and a one big, beautiful global environment. That's what I want you to think about. So you're, let's, you're welcome to think about me too, but I, I want you to think about this new world that's global and transparent and open. Crypto is doing amazing things for the world. Yes, but you are the biggest advocate of crypto and then you have been telling people about crypto and you know what, what magical things crypto can do for a long time. And I also remember that you, you've said that in 2023, the Bitcoin will cost around 250K. Do you, do you still think it will be the case or do you think it will cost even more or less given the current circumstances? So in essence, the question is, um, everyone is asking questions themselves now. Is it too late to buy or not? Oh, no. I, this, is, um, this is a movement. It's like a giant tidal wave just starting to come. And, uh, and crypto will be everywhere. And I, I think you want to, um, well, I'm not going to tell you what to do. But um, here's what I'm doing. I look at, at uh, Bitcoin specifically as the currency of the future. When people ask me, well, when are you gonna sell your Bitcoin? I ask, into what? Why would I trans, why would I change my Bitcoin, the currency of the future into fiat, the currency of the past? Why would I want any kind of, that's like saying, um, I've got a bunch of euros and I'm gonna turn them into drachma or French francs or, um, taking dollars and turning them into uh, Confederate dollars. It doesn't make any sense. We've got the currency of the future. It's coming. It's an amazing new technology. It's opened the world up. Um, it's going to create less friction, more wealth around the world because um, liquidity creates wealth. And, uh, and yes, I, I think Bitcoin, uh, I, I only make one prediction at a time. I made my prediction when Bitcoin was about $200. I said it was going to be 10,000 by 2017. Right there at the end of 2017, it crossed 10,000. Then it dropped down to 4,000. And I made the prediction that it would be 250,000 by 2022 or early 2023. And I'm just going to stick by that. I also think that from there, it just continues uh, on an upward trend partly because Bitcoin is going to be more and more valuable because of the network effects of all of us using Bitcoin, but partly because uh, the fiat governments are printing money and they're going to be somewhat inflationary and that, that inflation will make it so that people will be more attracted to Bitcoin. Okay, um, that's very interesting because, um, as we all know, developing countries actually use crypto because their financial institutions are not very okay. reliable. So, but what do you think about the countries such as UK or um, US, um, whether their financial institutions uh, will adopt crypto or then, or it still uh, will take a lot, a lot of time? 
Well, you know what Bitcoin has done is it's created a new a new form of trust. Uh, you, uh, it's a trustworthy currency because it's not tied to any people. Uh, fiat, all fiat currency, is tied to trusting the banks and trusting the the governments. The um, and you trust the governments not to print too much currency. Um, although in the case of Venezuela or Argentina or Nigeria, they're they're printing money like crazy, so they have terrible inflation. When you have terrible inflation, you have no incentive to build anything of great value because if you if if for instance I, I built something that ended up being worth a a trillion pesos mm -hmm. um, in Argentina. Well, those trillion pesos would drop in value about 80% a year. And, uh, and that trillion pesos wouldn't be worth much in three or four years. So, uh, so there's no incentive to work that, to build anything of value. That happens um, around trust. So uh, for instance, a lot of these African countries that have socialist dictatorships they, uh, where the government tells everybody what they ha have to do, um, they are uh, they are having a lot of trouble getting entrepreneurs attracted to their country to go build something of value because they just take it, uh, whether they take it through an inflation program or they take it by force, they take it. And so if you're in Africa and you're an entrepreneur, you're thinking, well, I got to get out of here. I got to go someplace else. Uh, in parts of Africa, other parts of Africa are very free and open and trustworthy. Mm -hmm. um, and think about trust. The um, in in uh, Singapore, it was a very untrustworthy country you know, 70 years ago. And then Lee Kuan Yew came in and he built trust, sort of one brick at a time, into Singapore. Mm -hmm. And Singapore now is probably the most trustworthy country in the world. And uh, and so during that time, they've gone from being maybe the poorest country in the world to the richest country in the world on a per capita basis. And that was all built on trust. So now we have a currency that we can all trust. It is, it is not tied to any human. It's not tied to a government force. It's, it's 100,000 miners are all watching over the blockchain to make sure Bitcoin trades are all honest. There are, uh, there are so many forces that are making this the most honest currency. And so as trust uh, builds in Bitcoin, uh, there will be more and more usage of Bitcoin and there will be much more um, value to Bitcoin relative to other currencies. So yeah, this is, this is the beginning of something incredibly uh, exciting and powerful. And, uh, and I think it's almost transformative. It's like, an anthropological change. We're going through a major transformative time where we're going from um, currencies that were tied to these artificial borders that were uh, tribal border, borders. Uh, let's face it, we were all tribes and we drew these borders so that we wouldn't uh, fight each other. We could kind of grow happily in our little fiefdoms but then the internet came and it became a global place and we realized that we could benefit from trading with each other around across that internet mm -hmm. and so now we have a currency that's global and open and transparent and trustworthy uh, and uh, and so now we're really global and you're seeing these fiat governments all sort of react to that in a in a way where they say, uh, either they react and say, this is great, let's move it forward. This is going to be an extraordinary time and we wanna be leaders in it mm -hmm. so that my people can benefit or the more paranoid of them uh, say, oh, wait, we need to lock down these borders and protect and defend and whatever. Um, and if, they're, if, they're, um, if they create trade wars and barriers and borders and non-tariff barriers, they're hurting their own people at their, so that they can be uh, self-aggrandized, <laughs> yeah. so that they can feel better, like I still have power. Um, 
the most powerful people on the earth, the best people on the earth are the ones who, who promote freedom at all costs. At all costs. At all costs. Um, those are the ones who, who, um, who push their power down to their people and allow the people to rise and become more and more um, uh, wealthy and, and uh, live better lives and, and more free. Um, freedom is so important. Think about the freedom in Korea. Here's, here's what happens. There was a war and then they drew this line and they had populations, both about 40 million people on each side of this wall. And that was maybe 70 years ago. Um, okay, and one side, the North Koreans took on Marxist um, socialist uh, dictatorship where government controls everything and tells everybody what to do. And the South side um, created a democracy, a free market system, capitalism, um, you know, a, a, a free and open society. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened? That, that wall stayed right where it is. That border is solid. The, the, um, the border between North and South Korea, uh, very few people have crossed that border. Okay, well, so we're now about 70 years later and the average South Korean makes 420, 460 times as much as the average North Korean. And that's even when you um, accommodate for purchasing power. The North, this North Korean I met, this woman who escaped North Korea said that she got um, for lunch, uh, the government gave her 24 uh, uh, kernels of corn and that was her lunch. Um, whereas the people in South Korea are living wonderfully beautiful lives and, and open and transparent lives. They're having more fun. But here's the real killer. The average South Korean is now four inches taller than the average North Korean is. <laughs> and so you're, uh, you're looking at freedom and how powerful it is. And when a government tries to control people, they hurt their people. So every time the government lays down another regulation, another rule, another tax, they hurt their people. And, and people should understand that. And it's pretty easy to say, oh, you know, everybody should, whatever. But that just means that that one person thinks that everybody is the same as they are, but they're not. And, uh, and vive the differencia. Yeah. It, it's much better to have a lot of flowers blooming in a lot of different ways. Interesting, yes. Um, so for now, a lot of people, uh, it's great that we actually raise this topic about the freedom because it's very important and it's freedom of moving the capital as well. Um, we also have that, uh, we also know that a lot of people um, use crypto uh, for the investment purposes, right? But now with the adoption of uh, consumer apps and such as, for example, Coinbase, and again, huge congratulations um, about the IPO, right? I know that you're um, yeah, very exciting. I am a big fan. I think it's going to be one of the 10 greatest companies of this decade. Um, my son and I always look at these things like, you know, that seven out of the 10 companies that are the biggest companies in the world turn over every decade. Uh, and so we have, a, we have a couple of predictions that uh, SpaceX, Tesla, and, uh, and Coinbase are going to be three of the, the new seven yeah. uh, for this decade. So we really think Coinbase has a great future, um, not only as a, a holder of currency, a fiduciary of currency, but also um, all those banking features. Uh, this could end up being the largest bank in the world. Uh, so we're really pleased with what Coinbase has built and what we think that they will build over the next 10 years. I totally on the same page with you. I, I made my <laughs> contribution to Coinbase as well. When they IPO, I bought a couple of shares. Um, but we all know that it's just the beginning of this uh, crypto revolution. Um, but however, crypto is still considered um, for very tech savvy people. So what do you think um, the crypto industry needs um, so it becomes more mainstream? And people will use crypto in a you know in a day to day life. Well, I think um, crypto has made the transformation from being just for the early adopters 
at least Bitcoin has, it's gone from the early adopters across the chasm and now it's mainstream. It's just starting to be mainstream. It's the very beginning. And there are, um, there are all these people who are fiduciaries. They take care of people's money and they say, we have to be well diversified. Well, there's an asset that has risen that they uh, are now very aware of mm-hmm. called Bitcoin. And, uh, and they're realizing that Bitcoin is uh, both a uh, hedge against inflation, but also runs independent of most uh, asset classes. And they are always looking for things that run independent of other asset classes. And so most fiduciaries are saying, yeah, we better own 2%, 5%, something in Bitcoin, because if not, we may be, we may be um, not hedged against the currency of the future. And (laughs) when a government prints $3 trillion or $5 $5 trillion or $10 trillion, um, they create inflation. The, the dollars you do have mm-hmm. are devalued and that creates inflation. And, uh, and so uh, they're looking and saying, well, wait, I need something to hedge against this inflation. And gold was always the old way of doing it. Mm-hmm. But nobody wants to sort of hold gold. It's bulky and complicated and hard to move across borders and all that. Well, now you have uh, a cryptocurrency that is frictionless and open and transparent that uh, has that. Um, the, uh, so I've kind of taken you in that direction, but, uh, but I, I believe that we are just at the beginning of people coming on board in fact, only one out of 14 Bitcoin wallets is owned by a woman. And, uh, and w- women control about 80% of retail spending. And uh, so you're unique in that you own a Bitcoin wallet. Um, the, uh, when people realize that they can uh, swipe their credit card and save two to 4% on a purchase because they're buying it in Bitcoin, they're gonna be flooding over to Bitcoin. And as long as it's easy enough to use, which it's getting there and keeps good records, which it's, it it keeps perfect records, but but the accounting isn't all set up. Once all that happens, um, I I expect uh, the women to come in force and become Bitcoin wallet holders and hodlers maybe, but holders at least. And, and uh, uh, so what, what we've, we've backed a couple of companies, one that's just doing extremely well called OpenNode that allows a retailer or an e-tailer to easily accept Bitcoin and make the transactions faster than the Visa network. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, and then we backed another one called Cryptio, which allows, uh, uh, an accounting system to be placed on top of the blockchain. So all those, all those transactions keep perfect records so that you can have a perfect record of everything you bought or whatever, and you can keep um, perfect financials. Now I'm hoping that down the road, I can raise a fund completely, put it all into Bitcoin, invest it all in Bitcoin into the entrepreneurs, have the entrepreneurs pay their employees and suppliers all in Bitcoin and keep perfect records throughout that entire system, pay taxes in that system and, uh, and have, have it all be perfect records so that there are no accounting costs or, or uh, special legal costs because it will, it'll be on a smart contract. Um, and so I hope to have that time because then as a venture capitalist, I can see how everybody um, is spending the money too and, and maybe advise them that maybe you're spending too much on marketing or not enough on engineering or whatever um, well before they send me a report. Uh, right now I get a report maybe once a month, once a quarter from my entrepreneurs. Well, this could be an ongoing real-time yeah. accounting system. So I'm pretty excited about what this can do for our society. Because I had actually two questions. I mean, the first one is 
an idea that I have in mind now with my tech friends is how we can bring more women into crypto and how we can empower them because actually having a crypto and then if we see how quickly it's growing, then actually it can empower women for their freedom, right? Um, and, and oh, absolutely. Freedom. So it's something that's uh, on my mind right now. And a second question that I actually wanted to ask you, right, as a great venture capitalist with all this unicorn that you backed, what is the next thing people need to um, look at crypto space? And mm. so when they pitch to you, what would you expect? What, what are you looking for? You, you briefly mentioned that you literally look at everything which relates to the payment infrastructure and so people can have uh, Bitcoin as a salary and it all moving to the cryptocurrency, but anything specific that you're looking at uh, right now? Well, I'm very excited about anything that's decentralized now. Um, anything where you are, um, where it's open and transparent and, um, and not really tied to a government or another. So it's free and open. Um, and, uh, and that could be in any industry. And I think that, Bitcoin and the blockchain and smart contracts and artificial intelligence with some surveillance have pretty much have the potential to transform almost every super large industry in the world. They're already transforming banking. Uh, they're going to probably transform insurance because I could create an insurance program that was just you pay your premiums on a smart contract and I'd pay you a check. Um, on a claim before you even issued the claim because I'd have surveillance. I mean, there, there's some things you could do as an insurance company that no one has been doing. And I think you could create some amazing insurance company. Um, in healthcare, I think, um, I think it's being transformed in a major way. And that is that both diagnostics and therapeutics are all going digital. So diagnostics, you can keep perfect. Uh, you can keep records of everything, where you sat on the airplane, what your blood test results are, what your genetic history is, um, how, what you ate for breakfast, all those things can be combined and give you a much more, a better diagnosis than any doctor could ever give. Couldn't, doctor can't ask enough questions. And, uh, and then on the therapeutic side, all that um, transformative therapeutics that are um, that use uh, computational biochemistry are the reason we have a, a a vaccine right now I mean that was the fastest vaccine ever that came out and it was it was all computational biochemistry nothing happened in the wet lab it all happened in what's called the dry lab the, mm -hmm. the computer um, so we're we're about to go through possibly the best time ever for an entrepreneur or a venture capitalist because the industries that are gonna be transformed are the biggest industries in the world. And I mentioned insurance. Well, what is government but a series of insurance packages? So I think governing is going to be much more competitive. They're all going to have to um, figure out how to, um, how to compete across border. And as you know, Estonia has a virtual government yes. that uh, that is just beginning, but has two, 300,000 citizens or, or uh, mm -hmm. residents that don't live in Estonia that they can provide other services for. And so, I mean, I could see a government being up in space or 11 miles offshore that provided your healthcare insurance, your workman's compensation insurance, your unemployment insurance, your pension insurance, your social security, your uh, welfare insurance, all those insurance packages. And that makes up 80% of government. Uh, so this is a really interesting time for government. Governments may have to virtualize their, their, a lot of their government services mm -hmm. And then just focus on things like providing better education, providing um, uh, defense, and leave the healthcare to the the uh, virtual and private sectors. Uh, this is going to be a really 
a tough time for governments. They are going through a lot of very difficult times right now because they're realizing that, that the world's open now. So the tribalism that we've built all of these, uh, these governments around where everything was real estate back based, uh, that's all changing. And now it's going to be global and it's gonna be um, how to, you know, you could have your, your social security and from Chile and your uh, uh, healthcare from Canada and your- uh, Yes, and then- Whatever, yeah. And so I think you, this is one of those, um, it's gonna be a really difficult time for anybody who works in government, any politicians, they're gonna have a very difficult time realizing that we're all going global and the geographic borders that have uh, been the base of their power, um, they're gonna have to be willing to sort of give that up for a new kind of power. You know, George Washington, he gave up power for a new kind of power, which was the, the entire country just flourished because he, he decided he didn't want to be the king of America. He wanted it to be a democracy. I think the best governments are going to be the ones who say, I'm going to give up my own personal power for the good of my people and my people are going to flourish. And that will, that will spread through all of the lands for uh, the next 40 years. So the best governments are gonna take their people to, the, to an amazing time over the next 40 years. And the worst governments are gonna be the ones who wanna go back to tribalism. Yeah, but thank you so much for sharing. Um, I know that we're almost running out of time. Do we have a time for one more question about NFT or not really? Sure, why not? Yes. NFT, the next big thing. <laughs> yeah, <Your opinion. laughs> I love new technologies. I love what they do. NFTs um, are, are the, what's come out of um, the blockchain keeping perfect records. So blockchain keeps perfect records of Bitcoin transactions, right? So it's, it does all that, but it can also keep perfect records of data of any kind. So an NFT is something that can be a permanent record, something solid that can be a permanent record. So you can imagine what that means. That, that can mean your, your ID can be on an NFT. Your nursing license can be on an NFT. Your, um, your art collection can be on an NFT. Your, um, your Draper University uh, certificate can be on an NFT. Uh, and you can put all those things up on your LinkedIn profile or whatever. Um, I, and eventually there are gonna be really interesting places to put those, but I think they're really important. And, and it's not just the collectors that are gonna um, really be a part of this NFT mm -hmm. craze, because I think, um, yeah, sure. It, it's like any technology has gone up, it's hyped to the monster top, and then everybody says, oh, well, it's not that big a deal. But over a long period of time, NFTs are gonna be really important to all of us. I think it's where you're gonna keep your diplomas. It's where you're gonna keep your, um, your, uh, uh, your uh, resume. Uh, and it's where you're gonna keep your art, uh, any digital assets. You're gonna keep them uh, in, in the form of NFTs. So I think that's gonna be a great thing. Uh, we're looking at so many creative uh, systems that are going to be using NFTs that in five years, I think we're going to, um, that's going to be commonplace that everybody's going to have a, an NFT wallet of some sort. Did you make any investments in NFT space, in NFT? Well, actually, it's amazing. We've made, we made a bunch of investments in NFT companies before they had been labeled NFTs. <laughs> uh, they just said they were tokens or non-fungible tokens, uh, tokens that didn't change and uh and yes we have quite a few uh unstoppable domains each of those domains is an nft you can buy uh, yana.crypto and with yana.crypto no one can change it and you can put anything you want on it and it can be your own nft and that's with unstoppable domains um uh, we have yeah, about four other companies uh, that we backed 
were somehow in another uh, involved in NFTs. And we got kind of a fun one coming that's a, a, a series of games that's all tied to NFTs. So uh, it's going to be fun. They, and fun is usually how the biggest industries start. Yes. And then this is also, uh, again, when you think mostly about fun. fun, mostly fun, right? When you think about fun, you think about Tim Draper. <laughs> you think about mostly fun. Yes, 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 yes. That's great. <laughs> um, thank you so much for your time today, Tim. Great. Thanks for letting me be on your show, Anna. I know it's going to be a big, huge success. Thank you. Thank you.